gentlemen, my next guest tonight is a stand-up comedian and host of the podcast, The Josh Johnson Show. Please welcome to The Late Show, Josh Johnson. How y'all doing? Everybody good? Uh, I, uh, I lived in New York for six years now, and I feel like I'm finally starting to notice things I didn't know, notice initially when I moved here, you know? Like, I was too overwhelmed being in a new place and everything. There's a, there's a slogan. It's on the train. It's on every train. It's at every stop. If you see something, say something. So you have seen it. All right. If you see something, say something. My question is, to who? Like, who exactly am I supposed to? Because don't get me wrong, I'm a snitch, all right? I have no problem telling on anybody. I've been a bitch for a long time, so I'm good at it, you know what I mean? I tell like a white woman, I'm like, excuse me, excuse me. But let's say it's happening. We're in the situation right now. Crazy dude on the train biting another dude's ankle, okay? And like, biting him good, like getting meat off the bone, all right? I see that, who do I say something to? Do I say something to the guy biting? Because that's how you get stabbed. Okay, you might as well walk up and say, can you stab me when you done biting him? Because I feel left out, honestly. <laughs> Do I say something to the guy being bit? Because he knows. <laughs> he knows, he doesn't need my help. Do I say something to a cop who won't see one for another 60 stops? <laughs> or do I say something to the person at the booth? You know the person at every station, at the little booth, that doesn't care about your problem <laughs> at all? They've seen too much. And their intercom is always broken. And I feel like the intercom is broken because on their first day of working the train, they got a tour of the train. So they saw what it was like. They saw the situations you could get in. And so they calmly walked back to the little booth. They walked up to their intercom and they were like, nope. <laughs> and then you were up, you're like, oh my God, there's a guy, buddy, a guy is getting me off the bone. And they're like, oh, you know, which, by the way, you can't understand them. All they're saying is, I'm not getting from behind the glass. <laughs> they're just like, why would I do that? Like, I'm safe right now. <laughs> you should have taken an Uber. That is your problem, huh? <laughs> I've been very blessed to be able to travel around the world doing comedy and everything. And I don't know, maybe it's an American thing. Maybe everybody does better. For every country that I go to, all I can do in my head while I'm there is compare. You know, what do they do? What do we do? Who does it better? And I can honestly say that in all the countries that I've been to, I found two things that I genuinely believe we do better in the U.S. than any other country I've been to. One is... Uh, Military. Oof. Who's touching us? <laughs> like, be honest. Think about it. Who do you go to bed in fear of? We forget what a privilege that is, that there are other people in other parts of the world that go to bed in genuine fear of their neighbors to the north, south, east, west. We don't have that at all. We're not scared of our neighbors to the north or south. I wish Canada would. <laughs> I wish Canada would catch a tone. Do you understand? <laughs> We would slap the maple out of Canada, all right? <laughs> so military is one. And the other one that I genuinely believe we do better than any other country I've been to is uh, flavors. <laughs> we have the best flavors here. Because we don't play by the rules, you know? Other countries, you ask them, their favorite flavors are sweet, sour, bitter. In America, you ask someone their favorite flavor, and they're like, my favorite flavor, blue. <laughs> what you know about that blue, all right? You ever had that good blue, like that blue blue, make your tongue blue? <laughs> show people, show them, just, ah, that's the best blue. There are countries whose palates have been designed around the fruits and nuts that grow there. They love passion fruit, they love papaya, they love pecans. In America, we're like, what that purple do? <laughs> this purple, real good. Let me see what that purple about. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? Other countries are full of reasonable people. 
All right, reasonable people who are like, here's what grows here, so here's what we're gonna pull from the earth to spice our dishes to make them delicious, right? Like we all went to India tonight and we had traditional Indian food. It'd be amazing, you'd have your mind blown, but you taste the turmeric, you taste the cumin, you would taste everything that they've been putting in the dish in the time that's taken to perfect it. Meanwhile, in America, we're like, I want to taste birthday. <laughs> like, I'm sure the first time that was pitched, somebody was like, what did you just say? And they were like, you heard me. I want to be my birthday in my mouth whenever I want. <laughs> It's like, you know your birthday's a day, so it's time, so you can't taste time. Why are you being a hater? Why I can't taste my birthday enough? <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie, I don't judge anyone, but I am genuinely blown away at the level of vaccine hesitancy we had in this country, but there were people that ate birthday on the first day. That is wild. <laughs> there were people that were like, I don't know to the vaccine. Birthday had been on the shelf for three hours or for somebody was like, it do taste like birthday though. Like, <laughs> it's got purple, it's got blue, this fire dog. <laughs> Y'all, thank you so much. I'm Josh Johnson. You can catch the Josh Johnson Show every Thursday, wherever you get your podcast. Josh Johnson, everybody. We'll be right back. <laughs>